Good morning and welcome to Prince of Peace Church. Uh, before we uh, start worship and our Easter acclamation, uh, just a, a quick uh, announcement. I uh, want you to know that um, the office uh, continues to uh, field calls. So if you have uh, any pastoral needs, please make sure that you call the office. Uh, there are teams of people uh, ready to uh, assist uh, your needs. Uh, also, a reminder that uh, small group Bible studies uh, on Acts of the Apostles begin this week. Uh, we're doing these meetings by uh, the format Zoom. Uh, and if you'd like to uh, join one of those groups, uh, please call uh, or email uh, Bill Prescott or myself. Um, don't be intimidated by Zoom. It is a very, very simple thing to do. And if you would like help doing that, uh, there are also people who are willing to help you uh, get online and uh, use that program uh, in a very, very easy and simple way. Also, uh, the final note, uh, on the uh, website, you can find the worship service and the music. Uh, so if you'd like to print those out or at least open up uh, another browser and follow along, uh, please do so. That, uh, that happens every single week. Our worship begins on page one in your worship booklet. Hymn number 188, Love's Redeeming Work. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. If then you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Jesus said the first commandment is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. This is the first and great commandment, and the second like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of God's Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Come, let us adore him. 
Alleluia. The Easter Acclamation. morning. Our first reading this morning is from Acts 2, verses 14a, then we switch down to verse 22 through 32. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them, men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. You that are Israelites, listen to what I have to say. Jesus of Nazareth, a man attested to you by God with deeds of power, wonders, and signs that God did through him among you, as you yourselves know. This man handed over to you according to the definite plan and for knowledge of God. You crucified and killed by the hands of those outside the law. But God raised him up, having freed him from death, because it was impossible for him to be held in its power. For David says concerning him, I saw the Lord always before me, for he is at the right hand, so that I shall not be shaken. Therefore my heart was glad and my tongue rejoiced, Moreover, my flesh will live in hope. For you will not abandon my soul to Hades or let your Holy One experience corruption. You have made known to me the ways of life. You will make me full of gladness with your presence. Fellow Israelites, I may say to you confidently of our ancestor David, that he both died and was buried, and his tomb is with us to this day. Since he was a prophet, he knew that God had sworn with an oath to him that he would put one of his descendants on his throne. Foreseeing this, David spoke of the resurrection of the Messiah, saying, He was not abandoned to Hades, nor did his flesh experience corruption. This Jesus God raised up, and of that all of us are witnesses. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Hymn number 209, We Walk by Faith.
Our second reading is from John 20, verses 19 through 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger in the mark of the nails, and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again at the house, and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put them in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Now Jesus did, Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing, you may have life in his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia. Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Um, Hide and seek seems to be uh, everyone's favorite game as a child. Kids love to hide, and they are so delighted when they are discovered. Adults hide too, and for a very different reason. We may not hide physically, but emotionally and spiritually, sometimes we hide, don't we? Speaking for myself, and maybe you'll identify with this, I find it difficult to allow people deep into my life. It's a way of hiding. Adult hiding places offer safety and security. And unfortunately, where we're hiding from protecting things that are bad, it also keeps us from experiencing the beauty of the world, intimacy and relationships, the confidence to try new things, and the commitment to grow. Now, the impulse to hide develops because of our experiences with disappointment and loss. Hiding serves a purpose. It can help us to be cautious in the face of possible danger. Uh, Hiding, uh, in many ways, is a built-in security system for us. But to summon us out of our hiding places, we need proof that life is safe. We don't want to believe just to believe we're safe and get our hopes up 
and have them dashed again, we need to have proof that we're safe. In this morning's gospel, all of the disciples are hiding because they are discouraged after Jesus' death. They had been on the ride of their lives while he was alive. So expectant, so empowered. Then just when they anticipate the ultimate victory, Jesus is killed brutally. And their hopes and dreams are killed alongside of him. That first Easter morning, they are playing hide not hide and seek. They don't want to be found and literally have locked the doors so no one can find them. All doubting. The image of the locked room is very powerful in these stories. They're locked down. They're locked down in their grief. They are literally afraid to exit their house. His death was brutal to watch. Terrifying to remember. And for them, the mission had died with their master. And they were hiding in fear and doubt, wondering what to do next. Any of that feel a little familiar today? Well, it's Easter afternoon, and the resurrected Jesus is in their midst, assuring the disciples their mission is not dead, but it is only the beginning. And the greatest gift is coming, the power of the Holy Spirit. But when Jesus appears to the disciples that afternoon, Thomas is not there. Our story continues one week later. I'm pretty sure they didn't call it the second Sunday of Easter at that time. But one week later, in one of the greatest examples of Jesus' love, Jesus comes through that locked door. Just for Thomas. You see, Jesus cannot leave Thomas hiding, locked in grief, discouraged and doubting. And so Jesus comes again. And as he reappears, he says, peace be with you. And he says that in both his greetings that Easter day and a week later. And I'd like to suggest this isn't a greeting. It's a pronouncement. It removes their fears. It erases their doubts. And Jesus revives them for mission and gives them hope. Now, sometimes preachers, including myself, have so emphasized the resurrected Jesus' power to release us from sin and death, that we've forgotten the fullness of the good news. That the risen Lord can take away our doubt, our terror, and our trembling, so that we can be at peace right now. Peace be with you is Jesus' resurrected message to us. And again, it's not a greeting. It's a pronouncement. With his touch, Jesus does not give Thomas faith. He renews his faith. He has been cloaked in fear, covered in doubt. But with his touch... Jesus removes Thomas' anxiety, his mistrust, his confusion, and his hesitation. He relieves Thomas of his uncertainty and in his place leaves his peace. 
Jesus can release us from the captivity of doubt, can free us from places of anxiety, and restore us to shalom, the Jewish word for wholeness. Have you been asking Jesus for that this time? Now, there are times dealing with the virus, we can get uh, what I'm calling OCD. Uh, that's not a obsessive compulsive disorder. It's overwhelming chronic doubt. The symptom of that is we doubt Jesus could really help us. Or we forget that Jesus could help us. And our chronic doubt sometimes lasts so long, sometimes even a lifetime. And it locks us up, and it locks people out. It locks Jesus out, too. Doubt is like a self-imposed prison from which we don't want to escape for fear something worse might happen that we don't want to face. It shuts us in, like the disciples in their locked down rooms, so that unfortunately we can't see any way of freedom or any way back into life. But Jesus is not just a savior, he is the ultimate savior. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And when we get into that place of OCD doubt, this morning's gospel tells us that Jesus is the one who unlocks the door to set us free. The story today is a story of Jesus telling us in our own fears, it is safe to come out of yourself. This morning, Jesus does not wag a finger at Thomas because he needs proof. He points his finger to his wounds and invites Thomas to touch him. And when he touches the womb, all of us Thomases, our doubts, our fears, our discouragement, and our despair are taken away by him. Jesus knows how to unlock our deepest fears, to anticipate our doubts, to give us what we need so we can step back into a world and take our place among others and continue the mission to proclaim him as victor over sin and death, but also the victor over fear and doubt. So this morning, that is Jesus' Easter gift to you. Not only forgiving your past sins, but offering to set you free from fear, doubt, disillusionment, and worry. You see, Jesus took all those things upon him on the cross too and released them in the resurrection into eternity so that we can be at peace, at one with God, and at one with one another. Peace be with you, Jesus said, not a greeting, a pronouncement. Receive your gift this morning. Peace be with you. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, last week, when you spoke her name, Mary experienced your resurrection. This morning, I ask you that, like Thomas, you would open us to your touch and that you would set us free from worries, doubts, and fears that bind us. Set us free, Lord, 
as you breathe on us the gift of your Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. Please join with me on page two of your bulletin with the affirmation of faith. Jesus Christ, though in the form of God, did not exploit with God, but emptied himself in the form of a slave, born in human likeness, and being found in human form, humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Therefore, God is highly exalted and gave him the name that is named by every name, so that as the name of Jesus, every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth. And every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Praise of the people. In the power of the Spirit, let us pray for grace to do the works of faith. Grant to the church, the gathered people of the gospel, wisdom to know and power to proclaim the good news of the resurrection. Make her ministers strong in the Holy Spirit to bring pardon and healing in the name of Christ. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for a world where many wish to believe but are held back by doubt. Open the way to the freedom that is in Christ, that his peace may prevail among the nations and in the hearts of all people. Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Grant to us, our families, friends and neighbours, the grace of the resurrection. Break through the closed doors of our fear and doubt and give us the faith that needs no sign but the knowledge of divine love present among us. Lord, Lord, hear our prayer. prayer. Have mercy on all who suffer persecution for their faith, but must meet in secret and cannot worship openly. Give them strength in their need. Give light to those who oppress them, so that all who trust in the resurrection may be free to enjoy this, to share their joy. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for the departed who trusted their Lord in the world and now see him in the fullness of his glory. May their sins be forgiven and may we who now follow in faith share with the promised blessing. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray in the name of Christ by whose wounds we are healed. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, who in this Paschal mystery has established the new covenant of reconciliation, grant that all who have been reborn into fellowship of Christ's body may show forth in their lives what they profess by their faith. Through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Jesus, our way, our truth, and our life, as the gift of this new day unfolds, open our hearts and minds to you, that we may see you clearly and follow where you lead. To your risen Savior, we offer praise now and always. Amen. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you stretched out your arms of love upon the hard wood of the cross 
that everyone might come within the reach of your saving embrace. So clothe us by your Spirit, that we, reaching forth our hands in love, may bring those who don't know you to the knowledge and love of you. For the honor of your name, amen. 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 Now please lift up your prayers, thanksgivings, and petitions, and intercessions, either silently or aloud. This parish family, Cardona, Ryan and Amy, John, Lee, Let us join together in the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you. And you have promised through your well-beloved Son that when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as may be best for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our Easter blessing. The God of peace who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of his everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, be with you this day and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen. Our closing hymn, hymn number 174, At the Lamb's High Feast. Alleluia. O oh God, may the empty tomb fill our hearts with faith. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Alleluia. 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 Alleluia.